I decided to do my informal speech on celiac disease. Let's jump right into it. So I was diagnosed with celiac when I was 13. Um, some of my symptoms were I was sickly skinny. I lost 25 pounds within three months. Um, my bones weren't growing right. I had joint pains. Um, I was always sore. I was vomiting at like minimum three times a week. Um, I felt like every night that I couldn't go to sleep because knives were spinning in my stomach. Um, people called me Skeletor. Um, so I went to my doctor and his diagnosis was that I wasn't getting enough fiber and protein in my system. So they put me on a high intensity protein shake, which was, had a bunch of wheat packed into it. So the result of that was making my health even worse and my symptoms were progressed even more. So why am I informing on celiac? Well first, the prevalence is rising. In 2000, it was thought that only one in 10,000 people had celiac disease. So at that point, they thought it was pretty rare. But now, it's one in 133 Americans have celiac. So as the disease becomes more common, I feel that people should know about it. And secondly, because of the large amount of misdiagnoses, the common period for someone to be diagnosed is six to 10 years. And the people that are there's 83% 80, of Americans who have celiac disease are undiagnosed or don't know they have celiac disease or are misdiagnosed. And that's about 2.5 Americans. 2.5 million Americans. So I have a show, okay. The four main points I'm gonna go over are what is celiac and what are the causes and epidemiology of the disease. Secondly, what are the signs and symptoms long-term and short-term. Thirdly, how somebody's diagnosed, what tests are conducted. And lastly, what the treatment is and what that treatment looks like. So now I have a short video, that uh, animation, like 40 seconds, just to give it, there goes my mouse. In celiac disease, a protein in wheat, barley, and rye called gluten triggers destruction of tiny hair-like protrusions called villi in the small intestine. Normally, villi allow vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients to be absorbed through the wall of the small intestine into the bloodstream. In celiac disease, gluten triggers the immune system to damage or destroy the villi. Instead of being absorbed, fats, proteins, minerals, and vitamins are eliminated in the stool. Decreased absorption of nutrients, or malabsorption, can cause malnutrition and other long-term problems. Hi. So now that we went over that, I'm going to go over five main points of celiac disease. So firstly, it's an autoimmune disorder, which basically means the body believes a healthy substance that's coming to the body is foreign and it attacks the healthy cells. And the health, the, what, it, what is setting the body off is the gluten, which is a protein, which is wheat, rye, and barley. And the body then attacks the villi, which line the small intestine and are uh, supposed to collect the nutrients. And it's also genetic, which means that's not a family. And if you're a first degree relative, you have, and somebody else has celiac, you're at one twenty-two chance of developing celiac. And if you're a second degree relative, like an aunt, cousin, grandpa, grandfather, then you're at one thirty-nine risk factor for celiac. And then lastly, it's you aren't born with celiac. You have to have a trigger. So something like an infection or a surgery or puberty or childbirth usually sets it off. Some of the symptoms, there's a lot of symptoms of celiac disease. There's over two, 200 uh, that relate to celiac, and they vary so vastly. There's no hard evidence of why they vary so vastly. There have been some connections made to uh, how long the child was breastfed, or how much gluten they had, and when they started eating gluten. So there's two groups that doctors usually characterize the symptoms of celiac. The first is childhood, which is more digestive. So we, think, we see things like stomach bloating and pain, chronic diarrhea, constipation, vomiting, fatty stool, and weight loss. And then we have the more adult symptoms, which are long-term. So we have things like anemia, fatigue, bone and joint pain, arthritis, bone loss, depression, anxiety, numbness, seizures, infertility, miscarriages, mouth sores, and skin rashes. Um, and then it's important to remember that the, the most, the harshest symptom of celiac is malnutrition, which have uh, a lot of problems in infants. It causes a failure to grow, failure to thrive, hindered growth, delayed puberty, and dental defects, and long term it can cause liver diseases and, and a lot of cancers. Secondly, the diagnosis. It's important that you have both both um, uh, tests because the blood test isn't always uh, right and there's a lot of misdiagnoses, which is a reason why. 
for the one who would just get the blood test and they don't always find it. So the blood test is basically, um, they look for uh, high levels of anti-tissue antibodies. And then the biopsy is just a biopsy of the small intestine uh, taken during endoscopy. And then, uh, again, it's really important that you have both because of the large number of misdiagnoses. And then lastly, the treatment. Um, there's only one treatment right now, which is 100% strict gluten-free diet. And it's important to remember that no matter how much gluten the patient eats with celiac, their villi will always be damaged, little or a lot. And it's also important to remember that it, it takes a long time for the villi to heal, three to six months in children and even a few years in adults. And then also, there's a large financial burden on the family with uh, celiac patients. Uh, over a four-year period, for females, it's $4,000 extra, and for males, it's $14,000 extra. So when you have a family of five, it starts to build up. So finally, we went over what celiac is, what are the causes, and what etymology is. We talked about the signs, we talked about the diagnosis, and we talked about the treatment. I had a short video, but I will not short, it's like two minutes, so but we have a lot of people to go, so I won't play that. Is there any questions? Yes. Why does it cost so much more for males than females? Uh, because we eat more. You need $10,000 a month to do it in Okay. Yes. Will it retrigger after, after you heal? Um, Will it go out, like after I pick it out? No, no, what, no. What'd like, you say? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you had this disease when you were young? Oh, no. It's triggered by an event. So oh, during, okay. at puberty, it's I continuous. developed it. Is it continuous throughout your life? Um, yeah. There's no fear for it. And the only thing I can do is it's food free. No pizza. Unless it's gluten free, but it's now escape. How do I eat here? Well, the, we have that dietary thing, and then I also meet with the, the dietitian for you and the chef. So they're pretty good at it. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff the body does to help with the gluten free. That's nice. Except this morning, they made life with my gluten free Anything else? <laughs> All right, thanks.